Ravens flock. This has been a, a magical season in many ways, even though there's been a lot of ups and downs. But with it being like a magical season and with this team going as far as we believe it's going to go, the drawbacks to that, of course, is there's no guarantee that we're going to keep everybody. You know, because when you got a bunch of players having career years simultaneously, and then on top of that, if we reach our full potential and win that Super Bowl, like there's going to be so many players on this roster who are going to just cash out and go to different teams where, you know, to get the biggest contract that, that they'll be able to get. You know, some for some players, they might only get that one big contract in their career. Who knows, you know? Like in the case of Geno Stone, I think Geno might get like a $20 million, $20 million a year contract this year. That that may sound, I may sound crazy for saying that, but I think it's very possible. You know, he's had to take a, a back seat the past couple of weeks since they brought Marcus Williams back into the lineup. But we saw what Geno did at the beginning of the year when he was getting one pick after another, after another. He is, because of that run, he's still second in the NFL in picks. So you're going to probably have a team that is going to see him and say, okay, he doesn't have like the measurables or any of this or that, but he's a, a ball hawk with amazing instincts and a, a extremely high football IQ. And now he'll, he'll have championship experience. So I think like, I think there's a chance Geno's probably going to be out of here along with a lot of other players. But this video in particular, I wanted to kind of talk about Justin Matabike He's one player who might be out of here, but I'm hoping he's not. We just got to kind of wait and see. But after the win last night against the Jaguars, well, first of all, in the win last night against the Jaguars, Justin Matibike got his 12th sack of the season, and he is now officially tied an NFL record because he has gotten at least a half a sack in 11 straight games. And I'm hoping that he's able to break that record next week against uh, the Niners, which I believe he's on, he's going to. But at, at the end of the game, when he did a post-game interview with Lamar, um, the the female who was like working for NBC, who was interviewing him, while she, she was talking about everything that he did and how great of a season he had, uh, you hear Lamar laughing in the background and saying that, oh, he owes me money, which really got me wondering if Lamar told him to kind of wait it out and, and so he could really cash out after this year, right? It's kind of interesting, right? Because if you guys remember over the offseason, even though there was so much attention focused on Lamar Jackson's contract, there were a lot of other players on the Ravens who they were, you know, they were trying to work out deals with. One player they did work out a deal with was Broderick Washington. They got him signed to, I believe it was like a, I think it was like a, a three-year, $17 million deal or something like that. They got him signed to a deal, and obviously earlier in the year before the season even ended, they extended Roquan. But they also were trying to work out a deal with Justin Matabike, but Justin Matabike did turn the deal down. Now, I'm trying to see if Matabike has an agent. I'm really not seeing it, but that is definitely, assuming he doesn't have an agent, that's definitely interesting that he chose to decline the deal. And it's paying, it's already completely paid off at this point. Again, he has 12 sacks. He's 11th in the NFL in sacks. He's leading all defensive tackles in sacks right now. Like he's having a career year. And it, when you look at his, his progression as a player, it's going as perfect as you, it's going as perfect as you can imagine. You know, it, now he didn't come right out the gate, hit the hitting the ground running as far as like putting up all these numbers. But again, that's not everybody's path in the league. Like some players, they just need more opportunities to just build up. And that's exactly what's happened. Like he's he's essentially doubled his sack total every single year. He he had one in his rookie year, two in his second year, and then he had five and a half last year. And, and then this year he has 12 and he's still not even done yet. In that interview, in that postgame interview, he finally revealed what's like the, the number that he's going for. And he's going, for, he says he's trying to get 15. And at the pace he's going, we got three games left. It's looking, it's, it looks very possible. And that would be amazing to see, like to just see a, a a defensive tackle put up that sort of production for us. It would just, it would just be insane. But what, what do I think plays a major role in this? 
I I just number one, I just think it's time. He just he's had more opportunities. Like he's pretty he's pretty much a veteran now. And again, with more opportunities, more reps coming in. And then also to go back to the more opportunities point, remember this year we no longer have Calais Campbell because Calais went out to Atlanta. We no longer have Justin Houston because Justin, I don't know where he went. I think he went to the Panthers or something, but he left. And while that, eh, I don't know if that fully affected it, but I think that may have played a role because obviously you had these other veterans who might have taken similar role, taken similar roles to what Matabike could have done. Because as you see this year, it doesn't really matter where you line up Matabike. There have been like he, he like just like Lamar said, he almost is like a, a baby Aaron Donald where. Obviously, he's an interior defensive lineman, so he can cause damage from the inside of the line. But at the same time, there's mad plays where you see him lining up outside, and he's still winning. And I think, yeah, yeah I think a part of that just plays plays a role in what's going so well for him. Now, there are other veterans who may not be Calais or Justin Houston who have come in and really made a mark too this year, like Jadavion Clowney and Kyle Van Noy. But at the same time, I still feel like in general, Mike McDonald has put a heavy emphasis on making Justin Matabike the the star of this show, in a sense. At least that's what it seems like from the outside looking in compared to previous years where it's like they kind of were working their way up to that. But I am really curious, though, if Justin has an agent or not, because if he doesn't have an agent, this is even more proof that if you're just at that level of play, like Roquan did an interview with Marlon Humphrey on his podcast where he straight up said like, yeah, man, you know, only, you know, mid-level guys need, desperately need agents. Like for, if you're like a, a player producing like M- Matabike, an agent isn't all that necessary because again, you're going to, the numbers speak for itself. You already have like all the leverage right here. Like just, and and again, I keep going back to that interview with Lamar and Justin at the end of that game last night and seeing Lamar just laughing. It makes me wonder, just like how when Lamar was going through his contract situation the past two years and allegedly you had people like LeBron advising Lamar behind the scenes uh, to hold out and how to handle it and go for what he's worth and wait and whatnot. It does kind of make me wonder, did he have that same approach when telling this to Justin, right? And it makes you wonder, did he tell a lot of other people to to have this approach, right? Or did he just specifically pick out Justin? And I, I guess we'll never really know. But one thing is for sure is that he had to tell Justin not to sign that deal earlier in the year. He had to. Like, the way he was laughing about it, it just had to be that. And it, it's probably the best advice that someone could have gave Justin and no cap. If I was Justin, I really would give Lamar a percentage of my contract, just almost like he was an agent because it, he could, Justin could have very easily just taken whatever deal they offered him. And now like, let's say hypothetically, he signed a deal similar to Project Washington, right? For, for Matabike to put up the numbers he's putting up and to have a deal similar to Project, everybody in the NFL would be like, yo, this is a steal. Like this dude is playing like a, a a top two top the not even top two the best D tackle in the league and they got him for this cheap but he ain't gonna be that cheap for that that much longer like teams are gonna look at his progression and his potential and it's he's just now hitting his prime like everything's pointing upwards like now he's getting the nickname baby Aaron Donald like he's having these big moments in prime time you know. And then on top of that, in his in his off, in the off seasons, like he works out with Aaron Donald. So who knows? Maybe even Aaron Donald is in his ear telling him, "Hey, hold out. I know how good you are. You, um, your time is coming. You never know." But I am also curious, what will the market be for Justin Matabike? Right? Like at this point, I'm saying probably a minimum of twenty five million a year, but maybe just maybe. Baltimore will get him to agree to a deal worth around twenty million, but it's still it's yet to be seen. Who knows? Because remember, the t- right now when it comes to his position, the top of the market is Aaron Donald. So who knows? Maybe a team just comes out of nowhere and just offers him a crazy deal where he's getting thirty, thirty-five, forty million a year. You never know. 
you never know, right? Like a team, a random team like the Texans or whoever, or like the um a team like the uh, the Jets. So no, the Jets got Quentin Williams, but a um a random team like the the Packers or something might come out of nowhere and just offer him like this crazy blockbuster deal. You never know, but hopefully. Uh, Matabike stays with us. That's what I'm hoping for. I know some people are, are saying that he might choose to, or not he might, but EDC might choose to franchise tag him. I don't really think that's going to be the case. I think this offseason, Patrick Queen is most likely going to get franchise tagged because they're going to at least try to work out a deal with him or at the very least get one more good year out of him with Roquan. And I think they're going to try to work out a long-term deal with Matabike as, as soon as possible. Like I don't think it's going to be a, a tagging situation. I think either they're going to get the deal done or Matabike is just going to walk for a, a bigger deal somewhere else. So it's, it's definitely going to be sad to see, man, Like because this team is, is feeling so special. We're seeing the tide turn amongst Ravens fans to where now if you're somebody who believes that we really got what it takes this year, you no longer seem like delusional because we're, despite the fact that we're not perfect and we've had games where it doesn't feel complete, we're, we're, we're still clicking on so many cylinders and we, we are still just showing that one way or another we could dominate pretty much anybody in this league. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. How special do you think this um, team is? And how special do you think this defense is? I don't think it's 2000 special. Like people that were saying, oh, this is the 2000s defense. I mean, that's just, you know, ridiculous to me. Like the 2000s defense only allowed a team to score 30 points or more one time that whole year. And they had, they pitched like four shutouts in that year. They only allowed 10 points a game. Like, so this defense is still, in my opinion, going to go down as, you know, legendary in their own right. But I, to compare it to 2000, to me, I just think that's just absurd. Because that 2000s defense, in my opinion, is just clearly the greatest of all time. Or at the very least, top two all time, you know, with um, right up there with the 85 Bears. But to me, they're the best of all time. So, but nonetheless, who knows? People have the right to their opinion. So maybe you feel that way too. Let me know where do you think this re defense ranks in NFL history and in Ravens history. And also let me know what do you think Justin Matabike's future is going to be? Do you think he's going to be able to work out a deal with us? Or do you think uh, another team's going to swoop in and, you know, pay him whatever they want? I mean, whatever he wants.